Every time you breathe, you are inhaling more molecules than there are stars in the known universe. So come hold the cosmos in your lungs and expand your lungs, your bodies, your blood comes from the bellies of exploded stars. They are the dregs of supernovae blooming with more energy than the sun will emit in its 10 billion year lifespan. Just one can outshine an entire galaxy on its own. Supernovae are some of the brightest objects known to man and to man. They mean bones, they mean bodies, they mean the birthplace of the elements that build our very beings. When you look in the mirror, you're seeing a poem composed by cosmic combustion. Come, these stellar epitaphs are spelling out our names. There are so many different ways to learn science. For example, in that poem, you just heard six different scientific facts. And I'm willing to bet that for everyone in this room, that is probably the first time you learned about astronomy from a spoken word poem. Art is just one of many powerful tools that can be used to not only share science, but to make it more engaging and more accessible for people with disabilities. I first became interested in the world of accessibility through a theater class I took at Ohio State. The class was called Shakespeare and Autism, and it featured acting games designed by Kelly Hunter of the Royal Shakespeare Company. The book on the topic is shown up here. I had the pleasure of playing these games with children on the autism spectrum every week, and I got to watch these kids act, laugh, grow, and open up in new and incredible ways. The games are designed to foster imaginative play while working on the development of life skills, such as making eye contact and recognizing facial expressions. I fell in love with the way that art was reaching people and helping to break down these communication barriers. So I decided to fuse my love of art and my passion for science education and to redesign these games to teach the kids about different science concepts. I recruited a team of volunteers, about half of whom are shown here, who all did an incredible job playing these games with the children. I challenged these volunteers to be radically silly and to risk embarrassment because if teachers don't up open up then why should we expect the same of our kids? We would all start out gathered around sitting in a circle like you see here and then teaching artists and kids would partner up one-on-one -on -one and play acting games. We acted out everything from cells in our body to the biggest planets in our solar system all the while preserving the core essence of the games, which was to foster these life skills while having a fun time. American Sign Language was also used to make the event accessible for children who were deaf. But as I said earlier, art is just one way to make science more accessible. Another important tool is the sense of touch. This year, I began working with an international team of scientists and educators who designed The Sky in Your Hands, a planetarium show focused around blind audiences. It features an audio narration and this 3D printed model, which has raised lines, bumps, bumps and textures representing our stars and constellations. I worked with COSI, a science center in Columbus, Ohio, to integrate this show into the planetarium's regular schedule, as opposed to just organizing organizing a one-off special event. And we're currently actually producing about 200 of these 3D models so that every single visitor, regardless of their vision status, can experience this tactile tour of the stars. This is so important because we need to normalize accessibility. And a crucial step in doing that is integrating it into everyday practice so that it is not only accepted, but expected in education's design. The planetarium staff also added captions so that the show could be accessed by deaf and hard of hearing visitors. Another sense I want to touch on is the sense of sound. Sonification is a revolutionary process by which we can actually audibilize data. What that means is we can convert real scientific information into parameters of sound and analyze it with the ear. This allows people to not only learn about science, but to actually do science without needing to rely on the sense of sight. And this is so crucial because at the end of the day, accessibility is about not only welcoming people into learning about our universe, but also opening new doors so that marginalized audiences can contribute to the investigation of our universe and to this process of discovery. Let me leave you with this. If science is important to you, then no matter who you are, you have the potential to be important to science. 
People deserve to know that not only is there room for you in science, there is a need for you. Whether it be through 3D printing, art, sound, touch, or otherwise, there are so many different ways to learn and so many different ways to access information. However, accessibility issues are, pre are present in all fields, not just in science and astronomy. Does the industry in which you work or the community in which you live have barriers for people who are not hearing, sighted, able-bodied, and neurotypical? And do these barriers exist because they have to or because no one is being forced to consider new approaches? Just because we don't experience an obstacle, that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means we have the privilege of not noticing it. So, in the spirit of noticing and in the spirit of awakening, Breathe in this moment like it's your last. Time being told to treat every moment like it's your last. Breathe it in like it's your first. Like you are so young. Like you are just beginning. Because compared to the cosmic calendar, we will never be anything but new. You will always be a child to this universe we live in. So don't you ever be afraid to wander like one. You see, us humans have always searched for answers in the unknown, carving constellations from the question marks in our spines, searching for our fingerprints in the stars. And maybe that does make us fools. Maybe it means we're just scared of what lies beyond our telescopes, but you should note that the size of the average shooting star is no bigger than your fingerprint. And it is a fact that when you look up into the sky, you are looking into the past, and the further out we gaze, the further back we are looking in time. We can climb through the history of this universe and witness the ancestry of existence. Don't miss this gorgeousness. Living in our equations and charts, don't miss the bliss of human curiosity, for it is our greatest work of art. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> science, science.